I joined through the biological chemistry program and then I joined a lab in Farm Talks. Uh, that's the lab of Karen Wilcox when we study epilepsy. I just commuted to school this morning by taking the train. Um, I can take the train or the bus and the commute's about 20 minutes for me. Other students can drive and they take their cars or you can even take the campus shuttles or walk to Hilly Campus, but it's good exercise. Um, so we're gonna head to my lab, which is right down at that building, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're in the lab now. Our lab studies epilepsy. Epilepsy is very common. About one in 26 people will get epilepsy in their lifetime. So I have several friends who have epilepsy and thank goodness they have a medication that they can take daily, um, which helps control their seizures and so they can live a normal life. But um, the type of epilepsy that we study in our lab uh, doesn't have very good medications for it. So most people uh, don't respond to the drugs that we have at this point. Um, and this type of epilepsy is caused by an infection in the brain, so encephalitis. And um, at this point, we don't have anything to give patients when they show up in the hospital or later on in life if they develop epilepsy. So we started studying uh, how the other types of cells in the brain lead uh, to the symptoms of this really resistant form of epilepsy. So the other types of cells in the brain are called glial cells, and they interact with the neurons in our brain, and they produce some of these um, pathological changes that lead to epilepsy, which are neuron hyperexcitability, um, the seizures that manifest as like muscle spasms, as well as mental confusion and trouble learning. So we're trying to understand how um, these other types of cells in the brain uh, contribute to the symptoms of epilepsy and how we can potentially target them with drugs to help have treatments for these resistant forms of epilepsy. In our lab, we use a lot of different techniques to understand how this um, disease is manifesting across neural circuits. And so we use imaging techniques to look at um, how the cells are changing physically as well as chemically how they interact with their environment using probes. We also use um, genetic tools to understand uh, what's going on and the different signaling pathways in the brain. And we use electrophysiological techniques where you can directly monitor what um, the neurons in the brain are electrically signa signaling to um, through circuits. So uh, today I have a bit more um, confocal to do, um, but I'm also running um, a DNA gel to um, look at a few different genotypes, and um, I'm making more uh, DNA primers. I have to test those, and um, later this afternoon I'm going to have a meeting with my PI, an update meeting, and um, then I'll have to do a little bit of other work. Um, possibly with an undergrad student, and that'll be my day for today. Most days I'm here um, at least nine to five, if not a little bit longer. Um, and then on a long day, you can be here longer than that. But otherwise, it's, um, it's a fun place to do a PhD in Utah. Um, I really enjoy the outdoors, and um, I really like the science here as well. This is our two photon microscope, and if you want to come over around here, it's um, our two photon microscope. We do a lot of uh, looking at live tissue with it, and we can put on um, agonists or antagonists for different receptors, and we can see the response in the tissue. It's one of the best ways to replicate what's actually happening in a, a human or an animal is to look at an actual piece of tissue from those. 
And so then we can see how the disease is progressing um, and potentially different um, drugs that we could use to treat it, we could test in this sort of system. Over here, So this is our um, patch clamp rig where you can um, use a small glass um, a pipette to actually patch on to neurons or to other electrical cells. And then you can actually monitor the electrical changes as a neuron is excited and sends out an action potential to the next neuron. And so these are all just basic physiological parameters that we can measure and of course are changed in epilepsy and then we can try to find a drug that will help restore it to a normal level. <laughs> weekends in the winter I try to get out and do something active uh, one day out of the week um, so for me that's snowshoeing but for other people that's skiing or rock climbing or in the summer hiking um, and then the other day in the weekend I take care of my ducks and do some gardening do some cooking and do my homework um, I really enjoy living in Salt Lake because we had a little bit of money saved up and we were able to buy a house, which is a possibility in Utah. Uh, there's uh, several other grad students who were able to buy houses. Um, most people rent and that's going to be affordable on a grad student stipend between 400 to 800 per month for a one to two bedroom. And um, so since we were able to buy a house, we have this cute little yard where we're able to grow vegetables. And we got ducks instead of dogs um, as our pet. And uh, our three ducks just started laying eggs and uh, they ran away at the moment. <laughs> Uh, so they just started laying eggs for the first time and I think it's really fun to be able to have uh, get eggs from your pet who also like gives you love. Uh, never would have thought of it getting ducks before I came to Utah, but it's really exciting. Um, and again, we're, we live like right between school and downtown. And so in the summer, I'll walk home from school. It's about a 30 minute walk from school. And um, we'll also walk to downtown to go out to restaurants or go to the farmer's market or go to concerts. And that's only one and a half miles. So it's a really compact little area where you can get around without a car. And so we really enjoy that, having that at this point. Three eggs a day now. I'm gonna come see the eggs. There's our eggs. They're super cute. They're a little browner than the eggs that you get at the store, and they're bigger. So those are my three eggs from my ducks today.